$25 down, 51 hours in, and a plethora of more to come. That's it. If you want the verdict without having to watch the video, there it is. I'm just like everyone else based on the fact that terms like beta and early access give me a bit of hesitation in pulling the trigger on a game, even if it checks off everything on my list. And that's good. That's how you should always operate with games that aren't done yet. Now let me contradict everything I just said there with a game called Hades. If you ask me my favorite genre in gaming, I can safely say that roguelikes wouldn't be sitting at the top. There's plenty of them that I enjoy, but I typically don't check them out until they become really popular or mainstream. Hades is the first time I've broken out of that routine, and I couldn't be happier that I did. I'm not going to spoil any of the plot lines, but if you want to keep it as a surprise as to what gods are simply involved or make a cameo, then you should stop watching now since it's pivotal to show them in relation to the progression system in the game. In this review, I'll be breaking down different aspects of the game and letting you know why, in detail, I enjoyed the game as much as I did. We're starting off with one of the strongest parts of Hades. The extremely watered down version of the story is that Zagreus, the son of the god of Hades and protagonist of the story, is trying to escape his home when he comes to find out that he has been outright lied to and told mistruths for most of his life. The gods of Olympus hear of his plans and decide to help him break free from hell and join them in Olympus. His father, Hades will not have this and sends his undead minions, some of them the most vicious monsters, and even previous champions in the mortal realm to keep his rebellious and naive son where he belongs. Zagreus comes to find out that he actually has many allies in the house, some that are especially surprising that are happy to help him. One of them, who happens to be my favorite, is Scully, the wise guy punching bag skeleton that Zagreus uses as a training dummy to test out new weapons. The branching plot lines are fantastic and found me refusing to skip any dialogue in fear of missing out on the slightest juicy detail. You're able to build a solid understanding of just about about every NPC you're able to talk to, which furthers that desire to take in every bit of dialogue. The personality that's given to each NPC is something that should be applauded as well. Everyone is so distinct and unique that I would probably be able to tell you who the NPC is if you pulled a random quote. Not because I remember the direct quote, but because I know it sounds like something that the narcoleptic sporadic hypnos would say. Honestly, the amount of dialogue that is present and unique in the game is truly borderline overwhelming. There's so many story and plot lines that are continuing to evolve, even with the insane amount of hours that I've put in such a short amount of time. I had absolutely no expectations for the story or how entrenched I would be, but I was pleasantly surprised. The very first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the audio is the voice acting. Literally every single line of dialogue is voiced and it's done so extremely well. And although your songs do stir up memories sometimes, I'm used to things the way they are, I think. But you, not so much. Oh, on the contrary, sir. I am profoundly satisfied. It's a no-brainer that this helps to keep people around and keep them from skipping through said dialogue, but the quality of the voice acting in Hades does that and then some. Sounds from the weaponry have a great amount of weight to them. The music you'll hear throughout your escape from the underworld is another solid experience. Crisp, smooth, and well-mixed. They ratchet things up just the right amount when it comes to mini-boss and boss battles. It's not something that I came out distinctly remembering a tune, but it fits the themes well and gets the job done. The art style of Hades is a fantastic use of color in a game set in the dreary depths of hell. But even when you break free from those depths, you have a vibrant, cool landscape to take in during your time in Elysium. There isn't any over-the-top effects or styles like Borderlands. Instead, there's a charming, polished, cartoonish aesthetic for you to enjoy while you're watching a giant feral rat shake poison out of its decrepit, decayed body onto the ground to create a pool that will damage you over time if you step on it. Speaking of damage over time, they give you blade and straightforward changes to your screen to tell you that you're either currently poisoned or standing in a pool of lava. And what I liked about that lava visual in particular was the fact that they gave you a sort of ramp up to that change on your screen, which lets you know you're actually in that lava and not standing right on the edge like you expected you were. The visual of your own attacks and your enemies are very good. Whether it's a lightning strike, a rocket coming from a railgun, because yes, that's a thing in this game, or an explosion from a kamikaze chariot, you'll not only feel the pain, but you'll crack a smile once you launch that rocket to the air and enjoy the profits of placing its landing point perfectly. During your time talking to the various gods and goddesses, you get an incredibly beautiful version of the characters that I can honestly say is unique and something I thoroughly enjoy. Every single one of the Greek deities involved looked the part when it came to their personality, 
voice, and what casual knowledge you might know of them. You're surely never going to be even slightly disappointed when it comes to the visuals of Hades. Full transparency, I'm not a roguelike pro or play them extensively, but I can absolutely say that after experiencing the combat and progression in Hades, I'll definitely be giving more of them a chance. As I stated with the story, you'll be battling your way through different stages, each with a mini boss and a boss for you to take out. As of this video release, there are four different regions and a final area that will see you take on a single challenge. This may not sound like much, but the amount of encounters you have on each of these regions and between each boss are numerous to say the least. You'll find yourself choosing from a number of weapons, and those weapons have different aspects that can change the way they operate and look, or make you rethink the way you're going to build around them due to the different bonuses you'll get. Of the weapons, I truly can't figure out which one I like the most, but I can confidently tell you I'm best with the railgun, which was the first weapon I cleared the game with. Each weapon has a regular attack, a dash attack, and a special. These also can change depending on what the aspect of the weapon is that you have. You'll find yourself in fast paced, a million buttons pushed to second combat on the regular, dashing around the map, dodging projectiles, AoEs, pulls a different status effect causing substances, and more. It's rare that you'll have a moment to trot around the map unless you've taken out all the enemies in a room, or you just have a few enemies left, and even then you'll still have traps around you to worry about. Speaking of those traps, you can very very much use those to your advantage, whether you lure your enemy there or force them onto that spike trap by using your magnetic gauntlets that pull your enemy closer to you. It's extremely easy to get the hang of each weapon's basic ins and outs, but once we combine this with different boons and upgrades you can apply, that's where things get complicated in a very good way. One of the biggest ways to change up your experience with a weapon is finding the boon represented by a hammer. This gives you the opportunity to augment an entire aspect of your weapon, whether it be its attack, dash attack, or special. These augmentations will be unique to whatever weapon you have, unlike boons directly from the gods. For example, you may get an augmentation that lets you throw your pull arm with a reduced range, but you're able to charge it up to throw for 200% more damage. When you pick up a boon, you'll have more across the board upgrades that apply the same way regardless of what weapon you have. For example, you might get a boon that adds a knockback effect to your special hits, or a boon that will chain lightning when you hit with your regular attack. It's so much fun trying out the different boons and seeing how well they fit with the weapons at your disposal. If you enjoy build crafting in other games or enjoy the challenge of here's a bunch of random upgrades, now make them work you'll thoroughly enjoy every escape attempt you have in Hades. I was disappointed once I received an augment that turned my rocket shots on the railgun into a widespread shot of five, but once I got a boon that increased the damage and added a knockback, I wised up and realized it was incredible for bosses who couldn't be knocked back and melted them once I got the opportunity to get up close and hit them with all five rockets at the same time. That is the beauty of Hades. You can make everything and anything work. Some builds you end up with might be harder than others, but with some extra critical thinking, you can turn it into a solid run. The boss battles are thoroughly fun, and not one of them is close to the other. Some can get hectic and flooded with different types of minions, while others will see you constantly on the move, dodging AoEs and waiting for the precise moment to strike. And the dialogue that comes from a few of these bosses really brings out the best in Hades humor and charm. You even get the chance to see different bosses all together in some areas. And that's something that Supergiant has done so well with this game. None of your runs are going to be like the other. There's so many unique experiences and ways that it's going to differentiate from the last run that you just made with the same weapon and it makes it so much more fun to play and gives you a lot more replayability for your money. Progression in Hades comes from a variety of sources. You currently have six weapons that you'll unlock by gathering keys. Those six weapons also have variants that will be able to be unlocked through a different resource called Titan's Blood. Throughout your numerous escape attempts, you'll have a choice of artifacts you'll be able to take with you that give you extra bonuses. One of the artifacts you receive will bring you back to life after being hit with a final blow, while others simply increase your total health pool or gives you a chance for higher rarity boons from specific gods. Many of these items can be obtained by giving gifts to the various NPCs that are in the house and even the gods that grant you boons. After a few runs, you'll be able to visit a mirror in Zagreus' chambers that will grant you different bonuses throughout your escape attempts. You have a plethora of choices, and you can rank up these buffs 
using crystals you'll come to find battling your way to the mortal realm. In the same space as the mirror, you'll also have challenges given to you by the fates that will reward you with one of the many resources used to unlock things throughout the game. Progression in Hades is set at a fantastic pace. You don't have that single moment where you feel overpowered. You gradually start to build up your bonuses and unlock new weapons, giving you that feeling of increased power over time instead of just having a one and done power surge. Each time you go to start a new escape, one of the weapons will have a dark circle around it that will see you getting a 20% increase to your dark crystal total for that attempt if you use that weapon. When you actually venture out on the journey, you'll be able to power yourself up through various boons, and those boons themselves can be upgraded to higher levels and even higher rarities. There's a simple coin currency that you can use in between regions, and sometimes even in between encounters. You'll be able to buy items that recover health, some dark crystals, or if you're lucky you'll be able to buy upgrades for your boons, or the very boons themselves. There are even rooms that you'll encounter that pit two gods against each other, and depending on which one you pick, you'll get a boon from one and you'll feel the wrath of the other. Endgame will see you ratcheting up the challenge level and finishing bounties. This can vary from having an increased amount of enemies, reducing the number of options you can choose from when receiving a boon, or straight up negating the damage you do to the enemies once. And if you're into miscellaneous things like room decorating, they have that too. Various upgrades to Zagreus' room and the house itself can be purchased as well with your escape attempt resources. You'll find yourself losing hours and hours of time trying to escape hell, whether it's your first couple attempts or you're on the back end of attempt 30. So with a game like Hades, you'd figure after I finally got my first clear, I stopped and started writing the script for this video, right? Wrong. I literally continued to play for another two hours because I wanted to experiment with new weapons and try to strictly build towards specific playstyles. This time I'm going to use the sword that can produce a damage reducing aura when you use your special and I'm automatically going to take every boon that gives you any kind of damage reduction. And you'd think that failing over and over again would get tiresome, not in the least. Not only do you get to spend all of those resources you just picked up to upgrade and progress further, but you also get new dialogue and the possibility of new plot lines branching out from the main story. You learn to embrace death and learn from the mistakes that brought it upon you. The last run I was getting torn up by traps, so maybe next time that boon that reduces your damage from traps by 60% might not be a waste for me to take. The game rewards you with all kinds of developing storylines and upgrades to wipe off the stench of defeats and have you ready to immediately try again. It's such a smooth process of getting your next escape attempt up and running that before you know it, hours of attempts have flown by. The story, the combat, the progression systems are all so good that I can say without any doubt or hesitation that there's no need for you to wait until the full release of the game. Jump in now while you can and get it for a steal at $25. Supergiant say that they have another major patch coming in June that's going to see a lot of bugs in a lot of compatibility fixes, but to be honest, I only had a few moments or instances where an enemy might have clipped through to an area that it shouldn't be, but beyond that, the game is very polished. But props to them for taking it to the next level and making sure that everything is squeaky clean. That same update talks about bringing in new weapons, aspects, and boons to the game, so I absolutely can't wait. But that's going to be it for this one. Hades has been a fantastic absorption of my time and has kept me entertained from beginning to end. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment below what your thoughts are of Hades or if you're going to give it a try. Subscribe if you haven't already for more gaming content. Have a good night and I'll see you in the next video.